Hey there, Hofstra fans. Welcome to this week's edition of the W.B. Mason Coaches Report, right here on GoHofstra.com. I'm Mike Sullivan, joined by head coach of the Hofstra men's soccer team, Richard Nuttall. Coach, how's it going? Very good, thanks, Mike. Two games this past week, Coach. Take on BU on Wednesday. You fall there 2-1. to one. You come back home this past Sunday against number 25 Brown. Defeat them by that same score of 2-1. to one. What'd you think of the week? Yeah, um, the first half against BU, a couple of mistakes. Again, lack of concentration, a fairly even game, and we 2-1 down at half time. Second half, we played really well. I was shot at 13 to 2, couldn't get the goal, so I was relatively pleased in the defeat, if, you, if that can be uh, the case. And I uh, thought we had an excellent second half against BU. I was shot at 13 to 2 and just really took the game to them. Uh, against Brown, opening 10 15 minutes of nervousness, and uh, I think a little didn't play fluently. But once uh, the last 20 minutes before half time and second half and overtime, I thought we were in control. I was very pleased how, how the team uh, coped against their athleticism and their, their uh, abilities, and I thought we did a, a, an outstanding job. Against BU, Elliot Firth scores his first career goal. He's been a player early on this season that you played him in a lot of minutes coming off that back injury. How have you evaluated his play early on? Yeah, we've got to balance it well with his injury and, and wanting to play him because he's, he, he's a wonderful player. And if you notice against uh, Brown, after 20 minutes he came on and he sort of changed the tempo of the game. He, he's got great soccer IQ, he's tenacious, he works hard and uh, he makes a difference. So we're trying to limit his playing time, you get the most out of him and uh, he's a game changer, he's outstanding and his movement on the field's good, his passing ability is good and uh, we're just happy to have him. How much importance did you stress on the Brown game after you you beat Colgate mm -hmm. then you're on a three game winless streak, mm -hmm. how much importance did you put to, to play well against the nationally ranked team? Well for me I think the BU game was a little bit of a turning point in the psyche of the team that, that I think the final understood that they can play well against good teams and they can have a, a great half and actually take the game to the other team so after the initial nervousness against Brown I think they just played to their abilities and they worked hard and I think they grew in confidence every minute you know and uh, as even in the overtime, I thought we were, we were relatively fit, in good shape, and I thought we dominated the game then. So a lot, a lot of that came from uh, being confident and, and the psyche of the team. Ignacio Garano gets both of the goals. The yeah. game winner in particular was a nice a piece of individual a play there from Ignacio. What did you see from him? Yeah, Ignacio, you know, he, he's a freshman from Spain that we know he's skillful. We, we worried a little bit about his power on the field and his athleticism, but he's quite quick over a few yards. and. Uh, He's been training like a man possessed and he, he wants to do well and uh, sometimes I think he's trying to run before he can walk but the fact is you know, he, he's been doing well in practice so we decided to blame a little bit more and, and he showed the first goal was a great head of it, uh, move from the whole team, a brilliant cross from Rory Murphy and he finished it well and then he's won us a game with what three minutes left with another bit of individual brilliance which uh, you know, he's been coming, I think he's just starting to understand the American college game and uh, we're hoping for better things from him in the future as well. You mentioned Rory Murphy, another freshman who played well against Brown. He pushes high up that left leg yeah. and provides you another offensive option running down the left side. Is that a part of his game that you really like? Well, we'll give him license to roam. We set up the system where he can get forward uh, whenever he, he feels necessary and within within the process of the team. And uh, he's doing very well. I think uh, the heat uh, got to him a little bit in a couple of the previous games. You know, being a, uh, a guy from England who wasn't wouldn't, wouldn't play in those uh, conditions, but I think he's just settling in. And I think again, we're going to see more for him as he settles into this type of soccer. Overall on Sunday, it seemed the majority of the game you had five freshmen on the field at once. Just overall about this class early on, how impressed have you been with them? Well, five freshmen, and I think we played three freshmen off the bench as well. And then you throw Elliot in there, I don't know whether he class him as a, as a freshman, but he hasn't played for the program before. Then I'm, I'm happy with the class, but again, we're 2-2-1, two, two and, and we've got to look towards Vermont, and it's a game we've got to give everything and try and win that game. We can't rest on our laurels and think we're doing well, we're not with a lot of improvement to make. You bring up that Vermont game, that comes up Wednesday this uh, Wednesday in the afternoon up yeah. in Vermont, mm -hmm. and then you return home this weekend to face Monmouth, Vermont, former American East rival. Yeah. They beat you here last yes. year. What do you know about the team heading to this? Hard working, athletic on the outside, tough tackling in the midfield, very well organized, very well coached, so it's gonna be a, a, a difficult, uh, Game. We know that, you know, we played there many times on that field. It's a nice field, so we can hopefully knock the ball around uh, 
we know there's usually a raucous crowd there who uh, is going to be a good atmosphere and hopefully will respond. Looking at uh, the offense moving into this week, Ignacio gets a couple of goals on Sunday, but Chris Creep seems to dominate the stat sheet in terms of shots. Has he gotten to a point in his career where he's more than an assist man and you're looking for him to take the majority of those shots for your team? Well, I think it's a combo. You've got to rely on Chris to be intelligent on the field because he's well known he's going to get a lot of attention. When he gets the extra attention, we've got a game to release the ball, which is something we're working on a little bit with him. But on the other hand, when he's on the ball, it's dangerous and his effectiveness is, is, is tremendous. He's one of the best crossers in the country for ball on, on set pieces and, and, and corners. And uh, he's just an asset all around. We, he's just got to understand sometimes he's going to get double and triple team, and that's why he's got to release it. Finally, Coach, what are, you, what are your keys this week to get a couple of victories and get your team started on the win streak? I think not look back and see how well we did against Brown, but look forward and see how we can improve our game. The first 20 minutes against uh, Brown weren't good enough and we've got to start games better. You know, we, we, four or five out of five games, I believe we've not started as well we should, as we should have. So from our point of view, it's a learning process. Uh, as we go along this season, we hope for each game we get better and better. Two games again this week for the Hofstra men's soccer team tomorrow afternoon against Vermont and then back here at home against Monmouth on Sunday for head coach Richard Nuttall. I'm Mike Sullivan. Thanks for tuning in to the WB Mason Coaches Report.